this is a 2011 Audi S5. This is my personal car. If you're wondering what I paid for this, about 22,500 USD, which I think is a really good price considering what you're getting. So in this video, I'm gonna show you around the car. I'll talk about its quirks and features, and I'll also be hinting on a few things that I think computer enthusiasts would enjoy. This is a car review by a computer guy. Now, starting first off with specifications, because I know that matters to most of you, right? You want to know what the spec sheet is like. This is sporting a true eight-cylinder engine. Okay, none of that four-cylinder turbocharged stuff. This is a true eight-core, I mean, eight-cylinder engine, uh, hence the V8 badge. You gotta, you gotta always put the badge up there. You gotta let people know you have a V8. Uh, and this is making about 350 horsepower, and that's stock, and that is out of the factory, so it's probably close to 320 now. It still feels very powerful. It's a very responsive engine, uh, despite being the older 4.2 liter model. Uh, if you wanna go with the RS5, which would be a step up from this, then you'll have the new 4.2 liter engine, which you would find also in the V8 Audi R8. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, this engine is water-cooled. We have a very large radiator up front. We do not have a dust filter, so dust buildup is an issue. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, that's really the only downside to the front of the car. These large grill slots here really don't do much in the way of protecting the radiator from pulling anything that's not supposed to be in there from actually getting in there. Uh, but apart from that, we do have a very nice closed loop in here to keep that engine running nice and cool. Now, the hydraulic on this car's hood is shot. It's been like that since day one of me purchasing it. And unfortunately, there is no manual lever included because right, Audi is just too good for that, I guess. So I have to hold this thing here and it's quite heavy. Now, fortunately, I haven't had to do any serious maintenance on the engine. The only thing I've really had to do in here, apart from what I need to do, which is clean the thing, uh, is include a T-splitter uh, for a vacuum hose, which is supposed to go back to the mufflers, and that in the Armatrix system controls the valve, so you can open and close the, the muffler valves in there for a loud or quiet sound. Uh, and that's actually right here. Uh, I'm surprised this hasn't melted yet because it's sitting right on top of the block. Jeez. But regarding the block itself, this is the 4.2 liter V8 engine that has been used since as far back as I believe like 2004. I think the old school RS4s used this exact engine. Uh, now that engine was actually plagued with timing chain tensioner issues. Try saying that 10 times really fast. And basically what happens is that you have a bunch of plastic guides that route the timing chain. Uh, and there's a couple of them back there. Uh, but basically those will snap or weaken and then your whole engine's gone kaput because, you know, if you don't have the timing chains functioning properly, then your valves don't open properly and your whole engine basically shuts down and fries and yeah, it's, it's just one big mess. Now in the past, I always like to badge my cases, I mean cars, but you won't find anything like that on this car save the two Audi logos, one at the front, one at the rear, and also the two V8 badges. I wanted to keep those there because there is a difference between the V8 Audi S5, which was circa 2008 to 20, 2011, actually 2012 was the last year that came out. And then 2013 started the 3.0 supercharged V6 engines, which I don't think are as cool because I mean, they're not V8s. Other than that, the stock S5 badges, both at the front and rear, have been removed to keep people guessing. They look at this car and they wonder what the heck it is, and that's kind of the point. Now, in terms of the chassis, things are very stable here, thanks to four large rubberized feet. You will need to replace them, though. You can't just, you know, leave them on forever and just expect them to last. And with my driving in mind, yeah, they need to be replaced right about now. These rims, by the way, are not stock. They're supposed to mimic the RS5 rims. Those are 20-inch rims. These are only 19s here from Hartman. Ah, there it is. Yeah, this is the problem with living next to two Air Force bases. That's pretty common. Although, it is the sound of freedom. These rims, by the way, are supposed to mimic the RS5 rims, which are actually 20 inches in diameter. These are only 19s. They're Hartman uh, aftermarket rims for sure, but they are very sturdy. They're a pain to clean. They get very dirty because brake dust buildup is just inevitable, especially with these brakes and uh, brake dust. Wow. Oh, come on. Another one? Only thing is, the brake discs and the calipers build up quite a bit of dust on these, so they get very dirty very quick. Maybe in the future we'll go to like some OZ Racing or BBS rims and we'll darken them a bit. A lot of people ask me what I expect the current ROGB trend in the PC industry to be replaced by in 2018 and 2019. My prediction, chrome. There's quite a bit of it here. We have chrome mirrors, we have chrome trim around the door sills, around the windows. We also have a little bit of chrome up front and of course chrome rims. So it all kind of 
blends together. And that's one of the main reasons why I haven't decided to paint anything on the case. I mean, on the car, uh, the rims themselves could probably be darkened just a bit. But for now, I think chrome fits the overall color scheme quite nicely. Now, at the rear of this chassis, you will find something else that is not stock. These are aftermarket exhaust tips from Army Tricks. The entire system, actually, the entire exhaust system up to the headers, essentially a catback system here, uh, runs through the entire bottom side of the car. It's kind of a, a shame that you can't see the beautiful chrome accents underneath because everything else under the car looks really nasty except for uh, for these pipes and I will say that the sound is beautiful this really makes that V8 engine come alive the sock system was really quiet you know how people in the PC industry want a really quiet system well if you have a V8 engine you probably want it to sound pretty loud especially if you're a young guy like I am you want to really show off what you got under the hood that's what this allows you to do you can actually open and close the valves as well I have a full-on video on this by the way if you want to check it out uh, but this is probably my favorite part of the car apart from just the the looks overall is this exhaust system I really love the way it sounds with the valves both open and closed. <laughs> Now, another important aspect of any computer, I mean car, is its interior. How you make things look on the inside can make as big a difference as how the case itself looks or the chassis looks on the outside. And this is a very, very clean interior. Uh, time was definitely, definitely taken to make sure that this looked as good as possible given this car's price point. I think that this is probably one of the nicest interiors on a $20,000 car, used or new, that you can buy today. This leather is no exception. I went with the red leather here because red looks good really on anything and it makes it feel a bit more classy and upper end than the typical black or white leather with an Audi. Now just because I think chrome is the way of the future that does not mean that I don't have integrated LEDs on board. These headlights here look pretty sweet. These are these go back really as far as the 2008 Audi R8. They were incorporated in the S5s right after that uh, and they've been doing tricky things with them since then but I think this is the cleanest headlight design so far. The 2013 uh, era RS5 and S5s look pretty sweet as well, but I like just the subtle scoop underneath and you can always turn them off if you don't like them. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you do have the option in the MMI system. Now something else worth pointing out, this card is equipped with pretty sweet graphics. Uh, you have the navigation system built in. You can really go through pretty much whatever you want with your car. You can control uh, you know, your engine gearbox, your steering, the sport differential that is included in this car. Switch it from comfort to dynamic. It's very strange. I thought I had that in comfort before. It's set to auto. I guess we'll leave it there. Uh, I keep the engine and gearbox in comfort because it shifts pretty hard when you, when you swing it to dynamic. Just, you know, so you don't want to shock people too much or make them think that the gearbox is not functioning properly. Uh, steering I keep in comfort because if you put it in dynamic, it is a pain, like a royal pain to turn this thing. I do wish this car had the flat bottom steering wheel like the, uh, the 2013 S5s do. Uh, that's one thing that I would like to replace. The problem is these steering wheels cost like $1,000. And when seen in the context of the entire price of this car, I'm not a fan of paying 1 20th of this car's price just for a steering wheel. Now, this car does have a speed warning. So basically, when your CP, I mean, your, your engine gets a little too hot, you go a little too fast, this thing will uh, pop up and tell you that you're, you're going way too fast and that you're going to be in some trouble soon. So, uh, of course, I never use this because, you know, what overclocking enthusiast does. But if you do want to overclock this beast, there's something to be mindful of. It's not, yeah, it's not the most intuitive thing ever, but it is there. And I think it's pretty funny that it says speed warning. So for uh, any parent out there who wants to purchase this car, for whatever reason, for your teenage son or daughter, you can monitor their speed right here. And something else this chassis has is the built-in SD card reader. Actually, two of them. So if you want to run... I don't know, you could like uh, upload a, a map or something with this one and then listen to tunes on this one or transfer files. You can definitely do that here. Not sure what the storage space is in this thing, but uh, you do have two slots here. Really nice to see a chassis with two SD card slots. Don't see that too many times nowadays. Now, I'm not sure how many of you saw our CES coverage, but if you did, you likely saw the Deep Cool Quad Stellar case. They have basically a vent system that allows the chassis to pull in more air if you are desiring that. If your CPU is running a bit hot, you can definitely let in more that way. Uh, or you could close the whole system. This kind of reminds me of that. So if you need more air in your chassis, then you can just uh, open the thing up. Please don't mind the uh, convertible 328i BMW that just passed. All you guys, that little slit back there, it doesn't really do much in the way of acting as a sunroof. But at least you have that button. This, by the way, just you push it and you close it. Simple as that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my perspective, this review so far. I think I'm going to end it here. I will say, just as a closing remark, that I am very satisfied with the driving experience and uh, just owning this car overall for the past six months. I hope for the next six months that it will uh, remain strong and not break, because if it does, I will be in the hole 
probably five or six grand at least, and that's you know a fifth or fourth of the value of the car. So at that point, I'm gonna be really, really frustrated and bitter. But for the time being, it's driving fine, and I, I really enjoy driving it. Just finding an excuse to take it out on the road is a. Uh, it's always a blast. So with that, if you like the video, be sure to give this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for, well, not more content like this. Don't worry, more car reviews aren't on the way. I just figured I would, you know, have fun reviewing a car for once. Uh, this is this is my car. I, I love it. And uh, I didn't pay much for it, which I, I think is really cool. It was, a, it was a good find. And so far, it's serving me well. This is Science Studio. Thanks for driving with us.